Uh, but I mean, uh, you know, uh, the journey it depends on where you are. Uh, for some, it could be starting. For others, it could be, I mean, a continuation. So we'll find out. Amisha Vora is with us, Chairperson and Managing Director at Prabuddha Sleeladhar. Uh, uh, thanks very much, uh, Amisha, for joining us. Good afternoon. Good to have you with us here. Uh, you know, the question which uh, people <clears throat> uh, want, to, want to understand is, where will they make money from here, Amisha? Right? Uh, it's a simple question, but not a simple answer, uh, because the rally today has been uh, very, very strong, very large. So true. Uh, but, uh, you know, do you go with momentum, sort of uh, pile into what is already doing well, look for things which may uh, do well in the future, which kind of has been languishing, uh, and there aren't that many there in that second bucket. Uh, so just sort of uh, kick us off on that point and then we'll dive in. So, you know, my broader uh, few points here to keep in uh, navigating markets from here on. A, on economy front, I think that some of the key triggers which can still give further legs to our economy to fire would be, of course, the softening of interest rate, uh, our re-rating, rating upgrade, consolidation of fiscal deficit, which generally in the past we were taking very negatively that the capex will be constrained. Uh, but I still feel that it will be very good capex, but still consolidation of fiscal deficit and huge investments by all the PSUs where possible. Mm. In turn, giving huge fillip to manufacturing. Having said this backdrop of where I see the economic triggers coming in from, I feel that markets uh, with maybe a thousand point further rally will find primary market competing very heavily with secondary market. And despite the fact that A, we have a very sustained 18, 20,000 crore kind of SIP in flows a month, we have very hugely increasing non-institutional participation directly in the markets. And FII is still a joker in the pack whose money is still not coming, finding India costly. I still feel that after a point, markets will consolidate in a range and it will be pick and choose across amongst financials and manufacturing being the two key themes. And still to write this story when the growth is very good and the asset quality will continue to remain good. Banking and financials, be it insurance, NBFC, but largely banking will be a good space to still ride this boom because the rest of the places seems to have been showing a bit of optimism, a little beyond what is reasonable. Okay. But yes, we all know India's story is right. going to be rocking. And yeah. rather I am looking at how, when and how fast the 7% GDP growth and 7.5% bracket, we surpass and reach that 859 which we really deserve as a nation. Okay, all right. Hi, Amisha. Good afternoon and good to see you in. This is Nigel on this side. I'm just taking a couple of points of what you said, uh, you know, financials with insurance as well and government all. What comes to mind is LIC. It's been a bit of an underperformer in relative terms. Yes, from the lows it's done well, but from the IPO price, not much. It has valuation comfort. It's government owned as well. What's your view on the stock at around this 1050, 1060 level? See, yeah, after a long, long time, uh, post issue when it was just still languishing and even this year's number in particular are not great. From here on, we feel renewed bigger coming into this both management and in stock and we continue to remain very positive on this. On the manufacturing theme, uh, there are many ways to play it. So which one would be the preferred way? Would it be EMS? Even autos would have an element of manufacturing in it, defense, shipbuilding. And also, the valuations of many of these stocks are quite prohibitive now. So for instance, Kotak has put out a note where they say that Cochin Shipyard's PE in March of 2019 was about 11 times forward multiple. It now stands at 78 times. 
Dixon is now at 79 times versus 27 times five years ago. And the list is, you know, it's self-explanatory when you look across the board. So how worried are you about the valuations when you make a fresh investment at current levels in manufacturing? Absolutely, I agree to this point. But I also feel, uh, recently, you know, I did one podcast with Secretary uh, Shipping Ports and Logistics. And the nitty-gritty with which the plan is made for our shipbuilding, ship repair, ports, and internal waterways have to be developed. And the kind of data points which were ready to unleash that plan suggests that the stocks which are now looking very costly because they are still devoid of the required A, the order book, and B, execution, because execution is not immediate. It is always with a leg. So one, if one takes a three to five years view, some of these companies will continue to post 35% plus kind of growth. And that's how they will still uh, generate wealth for investors. But in short term, as what I said, the markets after one more push and a rally will consolidate is what my feeling is. And it will be hugely competitive by primary market and series of issues and sizable issues. Mm, got it. Uh, Amisha, hi. I don't really take your point. Yeah, perhaps I mean, what the market's telling us that it's pricing in not just a cyclical up move in stocks like defense and shipping, but a massive structural change in the way these companies are being run, right? So... And maybe that could explain a 700% move on a coach in shipyard. Of course, valuations exactly. remain a point of debate. Absolutely get that. I heard you say earlier a 1,000-point move. Uh, if I got that correctly, you still think a 1,000-point move on the Nifty is possible, right? So I feel that, uh, one, we have just come out of what we lost in a worry or uncertainty a bit. But we have not yet uh, given in to the kind of numbers over next three months, the kind of order book that I expect across sectors, particularly entirely in the infra space. So I think that, yes, 1,000, 2,000, our target has been 24 and a half thousand, which is possible. And we think that then it should consolidate for a while. Four and a half thousand is target for uh, the present calendar year end, fiscal year end. I mean, what's the time frame for that target? We said that with third term uh, of Modi, we see this okay. 22,000 or whatever that we touched to be in the vicinity of 24, 25,000. So yes, it is a yearly target, you can say. I thought you were going to say uh, two week target, three no, week no. target, <laughs> <till> the budget. <laughs> no, <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> on the ground. <laughs> no, no, I'm just joking, but you know, <laughs> we're in that kind of a market. Uh, so, market is uh, in tearing hurry, I know, and they say that there is huge shock being built to hedge the portfolios. But let's see. Yeah. yeah. Amisha, can you share a, a sort of a couple of ideas with our viewers? Because that'll be really helpful. Uh, what, what do you think? I mean, you know, because you have coverage on so many stocks. I mean, you've got one of the widest coverage universe uh, across on the street. Uh, what's re what's, what's uh, an absolute return perspective? What looks really good? Correct. So one thing which is very apparent and coming straight in my eyes is that you know, shipbuilding will do well, defense will do well, or uh, other manufacturing, like anything to do with solar will do well. Who's going to really fund all these people? It's going to come from financials, as what I said. And if you see in last one, one and a half years, re-rating has happened across most of the PSUs, but somehow SBI has not full-fledgedly participated. And I feel that the kind of valuable franchise which SBI is, apart from the fact that digitally they are on the top and some of their subsidiaries are even more valuable, I think that SBI will offer a very good return from here on. Uh, one can look at many other PSU banks, but I think that being the largest, uh, it is still got good value. And when it re-rates, it can unfold a good appreciation for investors. So that, of course, is one of the ideas. You all picked up LIC last time and asked me, and I feel that, yes, 
uh, if they, as informed by the chairman, look at health insurance and the kind of network that they have, they can build a very good uh, franchise even over there. Uh, and going further, I keep saying manufacturing, manufacturing, and we all know what has happened to manufacturing. So it will be really tough to pinpoint specific ideas. But mm. on a slightly differentiated way, I would say that uh, I'm not looking at consumer directly, which is also growth will revive, but valuations will not need it. But I continue to maintain the strong stance on aviation, hotels, hospitals. That is the other way in which now the consumption or uh, will be looked at as we increase per capita uh, of our economy. Instead of those basics which we did in last two decades of soap and uh, paste, toothpaste, yeah. I think we need to move up to this value chain. I'm glad you picked up uh, SBI, Amisha. Before we let you go, 10 seconds. So you're saying that if I have 100 rupees to invest in the market, it should go to SBI, not to HDFC Bank? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, I also feel, yes, that HDFC Bank uh, has not only underperformed from stock market perspective, but has a very huge opportunity in front of them uh, to cross-sell uh, but here one is a very sustained story which is SBI and which will unlock while in HDFC there will be a few milestones that we as investors will keep watching with change in management and a very large uh, organization which needs to just come together how it is uh, mingling and unfolding but yes I also I completely agree. HDFC Bank is also a very good investment idea. Maybe slightly longer term. All right. Amisha, thank you very much uh, for joining in. She's gunning for 22, sorry, 24,500 on the Nifty with State Bank of India being one of the 